Good evening. Yesterday, India successfully test fired our first anti satellite missile system, or ASAT. This news was shared to the nation by the Prime Minister Modi himself. Now, the address was streamed live through the PMO's official YouTube channel. The opposition has cried foul now, accusing the Prime Minister of violating the Election Model Code of Conduct. So much so that the Election Commission has now directed a committee of officers to examine the matter. Now, for us to understand what all of this means, we have to first figure out what the Model Code of Conduct actually says. Now, this is basically a set of guidelines issued by the Election Commission to regulate political parties and candidates before elections. The code is operational from the date of the election schedule announcement until the results come out. So for this election, the code came into force on the 10th of March and will be in play until the 23rd of May. The code has specific guidelines for the party in power to prevent it from using its position for an unfair advantage. Now this is what it says. It says political advertisements on electronic or social media have to be approved by EC officials. The party must uh, avoid advertising at the cost of the public exchequer. The party must avoid using official mass media for publicity. The code also prohibits the use of official machinery uh, or personnel during electioneering work. No ministry or authority is to announce policies, make promises, inaugurate projects or schemes while the code is in force. It does make an exception though for emergencies or relief to people suffering from drought, floods and natural, other natural calamities. In these matters, however, you require the prior approval of the election commission before making any announcement. And you should not or the political party must not give the impression that the welfare measure is being used to influence voters in the favour of, of the party in power. Now let's take a look at the details of the Prime Minister's address. The announcement of that address was made by Mr. Modi on his personal Twitter handle. However, the address was streamed through the official PMO India YouTube channel. The official broadcaster of the government, All India Radio and Doordarshan, had broadcasted the entire announcement by streaming it live from the YouTube channel. But so did all of the other private channels and they did so of their own choice. The question that now arises is whether or not the Prime Minister's address did in fact violate the model code of conduct. We've put together a very interesting panel of very intelligent people to argue this uh, entire matter, but you're open to give us your opinion as well. Saeed Zafar Islam for the BJP, Mohammed Khan for the Congress, Sanjay Hegde is a senior advocate with the Supreme Court and so is Kailash Vasudev. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Opening statements by each of you. Uh, Mr. Sanjay Hegde, I will start with you. Do you believe that the Prime Minister violated the model code of conduct by making the announcement yesterday? Well, the manner in which the announcement was made, the entire build-up to it left no uh, measure of doubt that this was uh, basically an election advertisement of what was essentially a national achievement. Uh, previous uh, such uh, uh, events were often announced by the scientists concerned and after the scientists were uh, um, made his statement, they, then uh, if it was a big event, they, he would be honoured by the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister would probably make a speech and all that. All that was not in election season. In election season, when there is a model code of conduct, they, it is certainly unbecoming of the Prime Minister to attempt to colour an event like this with petty partisan political gains or e even being seen as uh, attempting to pass off something that the nation had achieved as something which was purely a party achievement. Well, Mr. Kailash Vasudev, uh, your opening statement, do you believe that the Prime Minister was in violation of the code? Good evening. The statement of the Prime Minister at this point of time with regard to the achievements of the scientists being able to make out a weapon which is very unique in its own right is a right which the Prime Minister has. Whether it is a matter which has breached the model code of conduct or no is a decision yet to be taken. We have got to understand that the Prime Minister will talk well of the nation and he will announce the achievements of the nation. 
Going into the controversy or creating a controversy in the statement is a political matter and must take place. That's where democracy thrives. If you take it that the Prime Minister has made a statement which is in breach of the Model Code of Conduct, it is a situation which is going to be very peculiar because the Model Code of Conduct has come into play, but any action on the Model Code of Conduct is a tribal issue. The Election Commission has the power under Article 324 to take a decision and to come to a conclusion whether this is a breach of the Model Code of Conduct or no. My personal view, the Model Code of Conduct would not apply to the Prime Minister making a statement and a declaration of this kind. On the other side, morally, it should not have been done. Because the moment you start making a difference between your authorities as the Prime Minister and using a model situation which did not exist in the past, we walk into trouble. My personal view, I repeat, I don't think there's a breach of the Model Code of Conduct. But it should not have been done at this point of time because you're disclosing what the nation can achieve in its world of defenses. Mr. Vasif, just a quick follow-up question. becomes a situation which okay. has a different fallout. You, you did say that uh, does not apply, the model code Hello? does not apply to the Prime Minister okay. making a okay. statement of this kind. Um, now, what do you mean by a statement of this kind? Because the code making only provides an kind, exception yes. to emergencies. This was not an emergency. I'll tell you what I mean. No, 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 no. The court also does not prevent a prime minister from declaring what the nation has achieved. There is no such restriction and there cannot be. You see, in the course of an election or announcing an election, if something great happens or some achievement is achieved by the nation, nothing precludes the prime minister or the president or anybody in power from making a declaration. That's my view. You can have an objection to it if it is used for pur purposes which can be a tribal issue at some point of time. At this point of time, by saying that this is what we have achieved in the matter of our defenses, I think there is, not, there is no violation of the model code of conduct. I, that is my view. Right. Uh, Mr. Hegde, do you have a rebuttal to Mr. Vasudev's the argument? Prime Minister, the that Prime Minister is entitled to talk about him. That a matter of achievement uh, is not covered See, by... I, yes, yes, go ahead, please. No, the model code of conduct is designed to have a free and fair election. There is no violation of the mode of, of the code of conduct in conducting whatever test there was. But the manner of announcing it, the manner of first putting it out on Twitter that there is going to be a great earth-shaking announcement, please wait for it, not coming on time, building up the suspense for about half an hour, and then saying that this is what we have achieved, etc., etc., uh, now, now give me. It was almost as if he was saying, "What a nice boy am I? Please g give me my prize." That there is certainly uh, uh, it, there have to be questions asked whether he was sailing on the right side of the law or on, on the side of adherence to the model code of conduct. The election commission is going to take a call on it. More so when the normal protocol in such circumstances was, uh, it was that the scientist or the department concerned would announce it. This is what has happened on previous occasions also. It, uh, 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 let's take this a bit further. Uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, tomorrow uh, if we win the World Cup and, and then the transmission gets delayed and the last ball is... You, you wait till the Prime Minister announces that we have won the World Cup. Would that be a violation of the, mode of, uh, of the Code of Conduct or would it just be a, an announcement of a grand event? I, I, I don't think that national achievements are meant to be hijacked for partisan political purposes. All right, let me bring in the other two debaters. We have uh, Zafar Islam for the BJP, Mohammed Khan for the Congress. Mr. Islam, your opening statements, and if you want to react to what Mr. Hegede just said, uh, do you believe that the Prime Minister was not in violation? And if not, why? I heard both the statements made by two other panelists, and Mr. Hegede clearly is totally confused, and he is <coughs> he also... He himself is saying that it's not a violation. And the other panelists have very clearly said it's not a violation at all. 
Our opinion is also is that it's absolutely clear that there was no violation. <laughs> the Prime Minister has that right. He reserves the right to make announcement of this nature. And it is, it is to do only with national security. I mean, something of national security, of national interest, national achievement, where the Prime Minister, and it was a message not for the citizen of this country, it's more of a message for the rest of the world. Because it, it is not going to, uh, he is not making any announcement as such that it will going to uh, improve the life of a common man on the street. But it was the message for the rest of the world that if you have a naval eye, even in space, you will not be spared. And the message is loud and clear for the rest of the world that India has demonstrated that capability, ability, and, uh, and something which the world should know is something which has been, uh, 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 has been demonstrated. Where is the question of uh, moral code of conduct? Uh, because it has nothing to do with, the, uh, with any of the <coughs> norms which has been laid down by the, uh, with the election commission, which has been violated by the prime minister. The prime minister, who else will, would have given this message to the rest of the world? It has to be the prime minister. And it is a, indeed an achievement. And there is no, for national security, there is no specified timeline. There is no, no specified date. It is something which was designed by the, <coughs> by, uh, uh, the the DRDO and the ISRO and they, their combined work, which had to be done, which had to be experimented, which uh, demonstrated to the world on uh, uh, yesterday. So where is the question of model code, uh, 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 violating of the model code of conduct? There is absolutely Mr. Islam, no I have a quick question though, for you. Was, uh, EC will examine. And was the election commission consulted uh, about this announcement before yeah, the well, announcement was made? I don't think that uh, I am, well, I'm not privy to that, but I don't think it was really warranted purely because okay. it is, it is nothing to do with uh, the local issue. It is more to do with the national security. And for, for, for a prime minister taking permission from uh, uh, EC uh, for issues concerning the national security, I don't think it is really warranted. And I am of the opinion and, the, uh, uh, and my party is of the opinion, the government is clearly of the opinion that it, it was not warranted purely because it is something which, which the message has been sent to the rest of the world about the, uh, the capability which India has been able to demonstrate, develop, and it is to, more to do with the national security and it does not come in the purview of EC. I mean, there, is, has, there should not be any specific date. And it, it's not that the uh, Prime Minister was thumping his chest and said, I have achieved it. Yes, it is his political will. Yes. It is something which could have been done uh, in the past. Yes, Congress had denied it. Yes, the, 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 the RDO has confirmed, the, the senior, uh, former DRDO chief has confirmed that they, they wanted to do it, but they were denied, they were restricted not doing that. But all these things away from that, these things the Prime Minister didn't speak about it. Prime Minister only spoke about the achievement of what the nation has achieved. And about the national national achievement, who else will speak other than the Prime Minister when the message has to be delivered for the rest of the world? Okay, all right. So let me let me bring in Mohammed Khan to answer that. Mohammed Khan, read the um, newspaper across the globe, across the globe. Okay, across fair enough. He was sending a message is, across it, the globe, no, and it should come from the Prime Minister. But news, but but let allow for rebuttals, Mr. Mr. Islam. Is the, it is the national achievement, and not for the party achievement or the governor government achievement. All right, Mohammed Khan, do you believe the Prime Minister was in violation? If no, why? Yes, sir. Absolutely. The Prime Minister was in complete violation of the Model Code of Conduct. And uh, I uh, respectfully disagree with Kailash, sir, because I believe, as Mr. Hegde pointed out, the job of the Election Commission at a time like this is to ensure a level playing field. And when we talk about a level playing field, the Election Commission has evolved numerous notifications and circulars to ensure that the government in power, with all the vast resources at its command, does not have an undue advantage. But don't take, my word, don't take my word for it, Kailash, sir. There are two circulars that I would like to cite for your approval. There's the first circular that is issued in 2007, number 464 INST 2007 PLN1. It says, under the heading of don'ts for the government in power, any and all advertisements, and I'll prove to you how this is an advertisement, any and all advertisements at the cost of the public exchequer regarding achievement. Look at the word Mr. Islam used repeatedly. Achievement of the party in power is prohibited and official work should not at all be mixed with campaigning slash electioneering. On page 73 of the handbook, which is available for anyone to see, Kailash, sir, they also say there's a prohibition on, quote, new projects, 
etc. in any form which have the effect of influencing the voters in favour of the party in power. These are two circulars issued by the Election Commission and which are binding once the model code is in effect. Kailash sir, let me also point out to you why this is not an innocuous announcement. Because shortly after the Prime Minister made this much hyped speech and uh, Sanjay Hegde sahab gave you the context of how it was built up and hyped and kept us all on tenterhooks, at 2.45, the BJP calls a press conference addressed by no one less than Mr. Arun Jaitley, the nation's finance minister, and Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman, our defence minister. They leave nothing to doubt, Kailash sir, in so much as the fact that they talk about how this bolsters the Prime Minister's image as a strong leader. They use Mission Shakti as a buzzword to advance their political prospects. Keep also in mind, sir, that in the last uh, 24 hours that preceded it, the narrative had escaped Mr. Modi's grasp with the announcement of the Nyaya project by the Congress party. This was nothing but an ill-conceived and ill-timed attempt to get the narrative back. Sir, again, the nature of an advertisement is not always obvious, is it? That's why the Election Commission has to arrive at a conclusion whether an announcement is an advertisement mm -hmm. by the context. When you have Nirmala Sitaraman ji, Arun Jaitli ji, Nitin Gadkari ji, Rajvendra Rathod ji, mm -hmm. all coming out and lending their voice to give footage to this, to ensure that this becomes a talking point. And the Prime Minister talking about it in his rally today, Kailash sir. Can you say this is not an advertisement? I will tell you one more thing. Here's the interesting thing. The story about this project was published as early as 2012, Kailash sir, that this capacity existed, that this project was in force. Forget what anyone else who is now a member of the BGP says. Forget what they say right now. The truth is this project is an old project. It's not even a new project. The very fact that you utilized it in such a fashion points to the inescapable fact that this has become a tool for election campaigning. Let me conclude by saying one more thing. Assume for the sake of argument okay, that this goes okay. unchecked. Assume for the sake of argument that this is not considered a violation. Kailash sir, tomorrow onwards, every other day the Prime Minister will come out and make some such announcement in the guise right. of a security issue. But See, if you'll give me 30 more seconds. When we're talking about security announcements, I just, uh, can I just conclude this point? Can I just conclude Very this quickly, point? Very quickly, please. Very quickly. Can, can I just finish? Very quickly, yeah. Kailash sir, in, on the 9th of March 2019, the Election Commission, concerned about the fact that the armed forces are being used repeatedly in a political fashion, issued the following circular, which you and I and everyone on this panel is aware of. Let me read out just one line from that circular to you. It is therefore yes. necessary that the political parties and leaders exercise great caution while making any reference to the armed forces in their political campaigns. Yesterday, they used this project inextricably with the armed forces. And let us not forget that the DRDO comes under the Ministry of Defense. Therefore, okay, Kailash sir you would have to adopt a very liberal interpretation. Okay, okay, okay. Allow Kailash Vasudev to respond. I've given you more than your That's fair share of time, Mohamed Khan. Kailash, uh, Kailash Vasudev will respond. Mr. Vasudev, go ahead. More than fair share. Yes, the response is this. The response is this. The earlier circulars which you refer to 452 and subsequent one of March 2019 with regard to the Defence Forces was issued in the context of what may be said by, defense, by, by the political parties where the utilization of defense forces in the defense of India or in the offense by India. What has now happened is that there's a disclosure of equipment or weaponry which has come in and has been used. I'm not aware of the 2012 use of this particular weapon or this particular satellite for this purpose. We have no idea in the public domain. You might have obtained your information from your sources which are justified as a political party. But prima facie on the face of it, the disclosure made by the Prime Minister today is of an event which has taken place in the very recent past or even today. If it's made a disclosure of that fact, which is not in the public domain at all, with regard to the testing of a weapon which has been successful, I see no reason to believe that this was used for any political purpose at this point of time. I'll come to the second part of it. The second part of it is whether it should have been done at this stage or it could have waited for a later point of time. Because the model code of conduct, you've read out the circulars of 2007, the directions of 2019 don't cover this kind of a situation. These become matters of trial and a decision by the election commission into which we are not going to venture. The prime minister has the absolute authority to declare what the government has achieved. He's not declaring that the BJP has achieved this. It is during his tenure that he's announcing what has happened of the very recent past. That means a couple of hours. 
I, personally speaking, if it is a Congress Prime Minister and made a statement, what would be your views on it? He would have the power to do so. He would have the authority to do so because those are national achievements. Just because today we are making a political situation out of a, in a, at, at a point of time when things are really boiling across the border, I don't see anything wrong about this. Hmm. You're telling the world that, look, I have this capacity, don't tinker around with us. So therefore, as for the model code of conduct is concerned, yes, you have circulars. You cannot use the armed forces as an election campaign. Yes, they're justified because they would be used otherwise following what happened in the, recent, in the very recent past, not four weeks ago. Right. End of, end of January, end, end of February. So these are the kind of situations where you have in? to draw a distinction from. Can I just come in? You draw a distinction of national achievement. <clears throat> yes, please. Yes, I just want to submit one thing to the panel before we move forward so in another piece of information. So you draw a distinction. But yes, uh, if I may, <laughs> that the election commission in the code specifies quite clearly that you are not to use official resources, personnel, uh, in order for any sort of you know, um, campaigning. In this case, the prime minister used his own personal Twitter handle not the official Twitter right. handle, and he used YouTube and not Doordarshan and All India Radio. Does that have any impact on, uh, you know, on the merits of this argument? Zafar Islam, make your point and then I'll ask the question of Sanjay Hegde. Zafar Islam first, go ahead. I, I, I'll answer that. I'll answer that, yes. No, no, I, My even answer to that is if very you simple. have heard all the if Congress spokespersons... It has been used on a personal... Congress... No, uh, Zafar Islam first, please. Mr. Islam, go ahead. Can I just... Okay. So, yesterday, just see what uh, the Congress spokesperson and all the other political parties have spoken about this announcement. They all said that uh, it is no achievement. Well, it's, a, it's no mean achievement for, uh, for the nation, but for them, it's not, it's not an achievement. I mean, right, something which a Prime Minister, whatever Prime Minister said, has, I mean, it didn't interest them. It didn't interest the nation. Then why they are making a hue and cry? Because... The fact, as uh, I said earlier, that fact that the message was for the rest of the world. And the, the disappointment was there for uh, the Congress party and other, others only because they felt that they have miserably failed. And people will definitely point out that uh, they could have done it, but they failed to do it at that point in time when they had the opportunity today. You have a, a prime minister, you have a leader who is demonstrating demo, uh, leadership quality and uh, the ability and the, the, the political will which is required. That's why, let me tell you why it is the, called Mission Shakti. Because people often say, Ichha Shakti honi chahiye. To wo Ichha, jo hai, Ichha Shakti, wo that, that has been demonstrated. That's why it is called Mission Shakti. Because this political will which was missing in the past, Mr. even Islam, for I believe you are arguing for against strike, your case. For, uh, uh, this, there was... You're effectively no, arguing that, that, that the announcement the, was political. The which they note, but uh, the Prime I'm Minister did say... But, no, I'm not saying. I've said the Prime Minister has not said all these things. These are the things they have. They are speaking. But the, or the fact that Prime Minister has only given credit to the people who they need to be given credit. He has but, no, no, but hang on. Mr. Islam, immediately the after the Prime Minister spoke, every BJP people. spokesperson <laughs> stood and up and the, took the credit. And the team and the ISRO team. Every BJP spokesperson, including yourself, less than 30 seconds ago, was giving political credit to uh, the achievement, which would then be arguing against your case. You're saying effectively the announcement was made no. to prove a political point, which would be in clear no. violation Le of the election code, Mr. Uh, Mr. No. Islam. I'll I'm, have, to change, I'll have point... to change the stand no. that you're taking see, on the show. See, there are two things. No, yes, no, no. I have, no let, let me just give you a clarification before you move to other... See, yes. I'm not... No, I, all I'm saying that the Prime Minister's speech mm. or Prime Minister's announcement, short announcement, was only directed towards the achievement of this nation and it is for the people of this country, it is for their safety, it is the national security and the team which has done it, delivered it, is something which needs to be complemented, the Prime Minister complemented, the world should acknowledge it, the government, the people should, people know, should know that this is what the where country stands okay, today so and the world should acknowledge my question it. then the Mr. Islam, That's why, why didn't globally, we allow the DRDO no, no, or ISRO to this make the announcement? The because the globally, people are saying that yes, <laughs> India is now in a different trajectory. Why, didn't, different why didn't we allow ISRO to make the announcement? As, an, as a nation, as an Indian. See, 
in the past, why don't you do a back testing? Mr. Rajiv Gandhi has not made the announcement. Indira Gandhi has not made the announcement. What are, what are you talking about? Every Prime Minister has made the announcement. Just go and check the record before even making this statement. I challenge Congress party and their spokesperson if the Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi had not made this announcement, if Narsimha Rao has not made this announcement, is this kind of uh, several, several announcements. Why there is a problem when the Prime Minister is making an announcement about the national security? Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, Mr. Vasudev, you wanted to answer that question about whether or not the use of a private Twitter handle I was, uh, makes a difference. I Go wanted ahead. to answer. Yes. Can I come in? Can I come in, please? Yes, immediately after this, Mohammed Khan. See, what... The fact is this. For these kind of announcements, official channels should be used. There's mm -hmm. no dispute on that. Whether it is Doordarshan, whether it is government machinery, whether it is the government... Should I say spectrum, which should come into the picture? There is, I, I mean, I am fully in support of it that only that should have been used. But here is a situation where the Prime Minister has used his own Twitter handle, which has got a couple of million people who watch his Twitter handles, mm. to give a message across. Because not everybody would have seen his telecast or his broadcast or his statements. He could put it on his private Twitter. Please understand, today we have drawn a very slender difference between Twitter handles your present Facebooks and so on and so forth for making announcements. Can it be said that because he's a he's the prime minister, he's got his own he's got his own accounts. He can't put it on his own account. You see, we are now going into an area away from the model code of conduct, trying to figure out to what extent he's in violation of the model code of conduct. The model code of conduct is a bit ancient. It needs to be totally overhauled in view of the present day circumstances and changing technology. Technology has to be brought within the purview of the model code of conduct. Till you don't bring it in, you cannot possibly turn around and say that this is bad. You're, because you're going to deal with a situation which has a penal consequence. In dealing with a penal consequence, you have got to have specific restrictions. If there are no specific restrictions, Lawyers will inform you that penal draws have to be strictly construed. Yes, Otherwise, yes. there's a very serious consequence which follows. But it is not true for those acts which are not strictly construed, which are not penal in consequence. The right. model code of conduct right. has a different connotation. It tells you what is to be done and not to be done by way of a guideline. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Vasudev, I have to. I want if to bring in Mr. Sanjay Hegde. Let us read the guideline and yes. test it under section. Mr. Hegde, I have an additional question for you that's been asked by one of our viewers. It's a good question, which is if Hypothetically speaking, the Election Commission does decide this was a violation in some way. What can the Election Commission do about it? What can be done? Yes. Nothing. Well, the Election Commission has a, a vast uh, panoply of uh, measures that it can uh, do. It could, it could conceivably censure. It, uh, that is correct. There have been Election Commissioners who have been very strict. Yeah. Uh, uh, once upon a time, we had TN Session who cancelled the Prime Minister's election, Prime Minister I.K. Kujral's election from the Patna Lok Sabha constituency. There are election commissioners and election commissions, uh, but uh, 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 not all of them bite. This one seems particularly toothless. They, uh, uh, you asked a question earlier about why on YouTube. Mm. The story is coming out now. It was shot by Doordarshan without a logo specifically to avoid Doordarshan and All India Radio taking permission from the Election Commission to broadcast. This kind of uh, um, speech which bordered on advertising reminds me specifically of what the liquor companies would do. In order to market liquor, they would sell, uh, they would go into a surrogate ad saying, here is McDowell's uh, uh, soda water or something of that kind. This uh, speech of the Prime Minister, when the model code of conduct wa was in force, was something which could have been much better handled. Was a speech absolutely necessary? Mm. Are you uh, telling me that without that speech, the test could not happen? The test happened. The test had to be announced. The test could have been very well be announced by the scientists or by a press release. Here, the Prime Minister chose to package it as 
something which, which has come after a great deal of suspense where people did not know whether, whether to go to a bank or to a bunker. And then at the end of it, we say, oh, look, we have Star Wars. We have shot say, our own satellite down in space. No. The, your intentions are clear from the way you package the entire thing. This was best avoided. This was advertisement and puffery. Whether it is a violation of the model code of conduct, they, that the election commission will shortly decide. But you did everything knowing that there was a possibility that it would be challenged. All right, Mohammed Khan wanted to respond. We had Zafar Islam argue that this showed political will on the part of this government to make that decision. Mohammed Khan, go ahead. Yes. Um, see, I have three or four points to make very, very quickly. First of all, both uh, Mr. Islam and Vasudev sir said that had it been a Congress Prime Minister, then perhaps he would have said something different. Mr. Islam went so far as to challenge us to say if a previous Congress Prime Minister has not indulged in a similar announcement. And thankfully, we have the answer on record. Mr. Islam, listen carefully. Mr. S.K. Mendiratta, who is a long-standing legal advisor to the Election Commission and has served under various election commissioners, was on record stating that this has never happened before. To the best of his recollection, something like this has never taken place before. You have the dubious distinction of being the first. Number two, uh, Kailash sir pointed out that uh, the information about this being an old project has been obtained by us through our private sources. Kailash sir, the sources we have are all available in the public domain. They are prominent channels and we have those links and if Faye allows me, I will be happy to share those with you as well. Number three, if you were in any doubt, Kailash sir, as to what the intention behind this was, you needed only to watch the Prime Minister's address today. In that address, sir, he spoke about the armed forces 11 times. He said, the Congress doesn't want me to speak about this. He went on and on about his image as a macho leader who has the will to do what other leaders won't. There was no doubt left in anyone's mind that this was nothing but a political announcement, sir. Number four, Kailash sir, I would also like to point out on a lighter note, he mentioned the Congress 31 times, so we are very, very flattered. On another note, I want to thank Zafar Islam, sir, for so beautifully <laughs> arguing against his own government that I am tempted to give a copy of this debate's recording to the Election Commission tomorrow, because Mr. Islam certainly celebrated it as no less than a political achievement which has no rival. The fifth and concluding point I want to make is this. Article 324 of the Constitution of India gives vast powers to the Election Commission of India to take whatever action they want to. That's what Mr. Hegde was speaking Residual about. Powers, the yeah. truth is that it can range from a censure to um, it can range from a censure to even suspension. And he gave you an example in that regard. One thing I must say, Faye, uh, to lend fairness to the debate, and this is my uh, personal opinion, Mr. S. Arora, who's the uh, chief election commissioner, has been extremely fair. Uh, so far. Every time we've gone to him with a complaint, he's given us a patient hearing and in three occasions, he has taken immediate, he and his uh, uh, fellow commissioners have taken immediate action. So I have full faith that the election commission, which I think has taken so moto notice of this issue, will indeed arrive at a fair finding. Well, let me just uh, point out one correction there, Mohammed Khan. It was not Sumoto notice. In fact, the TMC and the Communist Party of India have written uh, to Mr. Arora and have filed complaints. The reaction to that complaint okay. from the Election Commission I, was I to that. institute a committee that will that. look into the I'm matter. Sorry. Mr. Islam, do you want to respond to Mohammed Khan? Go ahead. <laughs> See. Muhammad Khan's, uh, Muhammad Khan, whatever argument he is making will not hold water. Purely because he should know and he should, as I said, that he should go back and see what kind of announcement the then Prime Minister, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, the then Prime Minister, Mr. Narasimha Rao, have made. And I think you, and even Mrs. Gandhi, have made uh, uh, such uh, 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 announcement uh, uh, in the capacity of a Prime Minister. Now, as far as Bharati Janata Party and, and uh, and also the government, definitely we are of the opinion that the Prime Minister reserved this right, the exemption, and uh, definitely as when it comes to the national security, and it is none but the Honourable Prime Minister has the right to speak about it, and it is something which is not like he was t talking to the uh, countrymen, this is what my achievement is, this is my government, all he said, as I said, I am repeating for the sake of uh, the viewer that he was giving credit to the DRDO team, the, uh, the scientists, 
but he was also giving a message to the rest of the world that all the evil eyes, if there is a like fidain of uh, with which in Bala court has been struck, struck badly, and they they have been liquidated. Likewise, if you have and anybody dares to even have this kind of fidain, okay, from there they have this evil eyes and they want to see and they want to disturb it. Then uh, the nation, then the <coughs> nation has developed the capability and the uh, uh, the resources to tackle such situation and something which is important for the nation because at the end of the day, at, uh, at the end of the day, national security is not a uh, is not only concern uh, should not be concerning only the uh, the ruling party but it should also be concerning the. Uh, the opposition party because it is concerning the nation not any individual party and when the and the prime minister has made the announcement he has made the announcement as the prime minister of this country in the capacity of uh, of the the, the, uh, the uh, not as a, in the capacity of leader of Bharatiya Janata Party but as the capacity of the prime minister where the national security is, is but something Mr. Islam, where he Mr. is Islam, responsible you, for that. Would you want to respond specifically to, to what Mohammed Khan said, if, if I may please? Well, Mr. Islam, do you want to respond specifically to what Mohammed Khan said about the fact that speeches since that announcement of all members of the BJP, including the Prime Minister, have been about how this is a political achievement, how this is a display of political will, and how this is a display of political will that was not displayed by the Congress in UPA 1 and 2. Does that not suggest that the announcement at the end of the day was about a political achievement and not a defense <coughs> achievement? No, uh, uh, see, again, it is, it is the, what, what, what are we discussing? The security <coughs> aspect. We are not discussing about our scheme and what we have been, uh, what we have given and what we will be giving. It is something or what we, 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 we had, uh, we could have given and what the Congress uh, and refuting Congress claim and making some announcement. But it is something with the, about the national security and everybody will speak about it because it is, even I expect that Rahul Gandhi, like he complimented, he should speak about it. In fact, Rahul Gandhi, of course, is a mean guy. He will never make a, a, any positive aspect, a statement about the government. But, uh, but any responsible opposition leader, particularly the principal response, uh, leader of the principal uh, opposition party, should have made that comment. Because, and that's why, if you see what Pakistan uh, foreign minister said, that in, we are a united nation. Because... We have, even the opposition parties and us work to, uh, together when it comes to national issues and national security issues. When in, but see the India, our neighbor, it's a divided horse. So, so if, if I may ask you one more question, are, one second, Mr. Uh, Islam, if I may ask you a question, according to... They are irresponsible, yes, uh, even for issues uh, which should be Mr. Mr. Islam, everyone. Mr. Islam, uh, according to uh, the... Observer Research Foundation, India has had the capacity for AST, uh, ASAT for a while now, for several years in fact. Uh, we've had it since 2014 at, in the very least. Is there a reason why the test happened now and not earlier or later? Was this date chosen for any particular reason? Not at all, not at all. In fact, if you heard uh, Mr. Saraswat, what did he say yesterday? Then in 2012, I had approached the leadership in UOP. Had, had I been given the permission, then I would have been in a position by 2015 to conduct uh, 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 this mission. So in three years' time, once the permission was granted to him, then he would have taken three years' time. And three years down the line, he would have been able to conduct this mission successfully. Now, in 2015, this had come up to the Prime Minister for uh, discussion and the presentation was made to him and he realized that it is important because we have supremacy in, yes. uh, in air, land, we have demonstrated our supremacy to our neighbour that we, we, are, we, are, we are excellent in, in air, land and sea. But, and even in cyber war, we are, we are te uh, technological experts are something which is, uh, with, they have proven their uh, Ex expertise no, no, so, to the rest so of the world. This so date was not picked the, uh, for the test wall. by anyone. That's something which Prime Minister it's felt that is important. He has given, he was given, go ahead, when they were ready, they just conducted okay. it. Right. They, we, we didn't choose the date. The date was chosen by them. 
All right, uh, I, I, have, I have time for just one more closing statement. Is there anyone who wants to put a final argument uh, forward? Mohamed Khan, go ahead. I, can, I, can I come in? Can I come I in? I saw you taking notes. Yes, go ahead. Can I just give the sequence of events? Yes. yes. Mr. Islam, Mr. Islam, I, I have something to tell you. Mr. Islam, I have something to tell you that may well shock you, considering that it seems your knowledge of Indian history goes back only till 2014. You would be surprised to learn that we have won three wars against Pakistan. Let me also tell you, we have split Pakistan into two. Therefore, don't have this feeling of insecurity that it is only in the last four and a half years Achha. that we've come into our own as a nation. Your argument that previous prime ministers have made similar announcements seems to be an acknowledgement so of why the didn't you buy Rafael? You're saying, why didn't you buy Rafael? Because so, you are Kanun, not getting paid for some commission. And you must no, no, I'm asking that. you. Are Thanks uh, for all the information, but why didn't you buy Rafael? So why didn't you tell the world? Why did you tell the world? All right, you're doing that thing again. Uh, all right, I'm going, to make, I'm going to ask both of you to stop because now the argument is moving away from the point that we're discussing. Closing statements for the, for the other two panelists as well. Sanjay Hegde, you wanted to provide the sequence of the events. Sanjay Hegde, go ahead. See the sequence. Uh, Mr. Islam is right. This didn't happen overnight. The timing was chosen. The timing was chosen because in January, there was a space launch which sent the target satellite uh, into space. You, it was only after the target satellite was in position that you, uh, that you sent up these interceptors to destroy it. So it was all set for a time that you knew uh, that elections were going to be held uh, around April anyway. The, it, it was basically one more event which had been planned in advance, leading up to the, to the big event which we all anticipate. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind that the speech was planned, that this was one more part which was uh, of display, which was kept for the campaign, as it were. I, my, it is my sorrow that you know, national achievements are, are also now fodder for election campaigns. Please, the country comes, uh, uh, elections come and go, the country goes on forever. Do not cheapen it by making it a purely partisan thing. India, okay. India, India will win before the elections, India will win after the elections. Do, uh, don't make it a Congress BJP thing. All right, uh, we, we've run out of time and I want to thank my panelists for giving us time this evening. It's been an extremely uh, interesting conversation about the code of conduct and we're going to continue to keep a very close eye on the movement of political parties as we go closer and closer towards the biggest exercise of democracy in the world when all of us vote. My appeal, of course, to all of the citizens who are watching is to vote. It is our duty. You must vote at this time like your country and your democracy depends on it, because it does. Thanks for watching. Good night.